I hope we're not going to find anything horrible. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on uh, a bank holiday, actually, here in uh, Lincolnshire. I'm with the Purple Pig. I call it that because, well, when we bought it last year, that's the name that uh, it got given due to it being purple and uh, a right pig. It's MOT time for the Purple Pig. It expires in 20 days or so. And the car has been stood, it hasn't been used since about October 2023. I try, if possible, not to take stuff like this out on the roads during salt season, mainly because, well, I don't want to get it all up inside and it start to rot. It's something I want to preserve within the collection. If you haven't seen the videos of the car on the channel, let me give you a quick history of it. It is a Mark I Audi TT Coupe. It's quite an old one, 24 years old now. It's a 2000 plate. It's the 225 BAM edition turbocharged Quattro. And it's quite rare in this Merlin purple color. Last year I bought it, I paid uh, 1500 quid for it and Dad and I spent quite a lot of time getting it right. All under the bonnet, all the pipes and everything had turned to mush. So we needed a new PCV system and uh, the turbo intercooler pipe was all replaced with silicon and a few other bits and pieces as well. Cosmetically, the car is brilliant. Um, it's not rusty in any way, shape or form. It's been looked after. The interior is beautiful, but it had been neglected mechanically probably for quite a few years. Anyway, I've started the car up this morning. The battery is as flat as a pancake. I haven't had it on my smart charger for the past six months. So that's something we need to do first and foremost and driven it the long way round. It is taxed, insured and MOT'd. However, I've got an ABS light pop up, which is a problem of half expecting a brake to be stuck on somewhere. So that's something we've got to look at. But in this video, Dad and I will give the car a good going over because well, tomorrow <laughs> is the MOT test. I was confident that it was going to be okay. Maybe I shouldn't have been so confident. Maybe I might have to cancel my MOT test tomorrow if we find something a little bit more wrong with that ABS system. First port of call, get the battery on charge, speak to Dad, maybe have a cup of tea, see what we can find. Good morning. Yeah then, mister. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Uh, what have you got to tell me? You got your tea? Hang on a minute, we haven't even started and you've got a cup of tea going on. Um, I've brought you an MOT pre-review, basically. Pre-review? Yeah, I've sort of sprung this on you because the MOT, well, is tomorrow. Um, it's the Audi TT. You don't like this car. In fact, I'm going to pick me, pick me tea up as well. Oh, I mean, Reg has been round with his veg. Has Fred been round and brought you loads of collies? What a top bloke. Um, See go this. on then. Talk to me. I did. I, I might upset people. No, 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 no. It's well documented you don't like the Audi TT. Well documented. Well, they look nice, don't they? I think so. They look nice, but in principle... You don't like working on these? I don't. And I understand why, because the engine bay is tight, and it seems to have quite a few gremlins, and it's one of them running jokes every, every time... Everybody you talk to know very well that these are not very I mean, much fun. Every time you fix something, something else goes wrong. Yeah. yeah. So I've got to tell you about a few things then that I've noticed this morning. ABS warning light has come on yep. whilst running it round the corner. And it did has it, been stood. Did it come on when you first struck it up or did it come on when you was driving it? It came on when I was driving it. So I struck the car up, reversed it out the drive, mm. took it about 10 metres down the road. Ba, 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 ABS, warning light, warning light. Yeah, was it far in the ABS or not? Didn't feel like it. No. Um, the car was driving fine apart from that turbo wine that we know about. Um, but no, it wasn't pulling to one side. The brakes didn't feel spongy. Um, it didn't feel that it was a problem. The ABS light didn't come on until you drove it. No. What's that telling me? Well, if the ABS light comes on when it's stationary, you can bet your life it's in a 
wiring fault. Oh, right. It's gone, ooh, something's wrong straight away. Yeah. But once it's, didn't know until it's a so it's moving fault. Yes. I, I'm expecting it. There's a brake hanging on somewhere or something to do with some corrosion. The issue I've got is the battery is that knacked that yeah. I can't turn the battery back on to see if it had gone, if that makes sense. So I think the first port of call is to get that battery on charge. I have done the cardinal sin of not having the battery on charge over the past six months. And that is my fault. It's killed that battery, hasn't it? If I was you, I should open the door or take the keys out or something. What, so we don't lose them? <laughs> you know why. Let's get the doors open. So it doesn't lock itself, eh? There's the keys. Let's take the keys out. Let's not have it. Let's. Uh, it's filthy, it. by the way. Let's not finish up being locked out of it. No. So I've got the keys. Here are the keys. That's I've got them. Good. So take the uh, the battery carrier off. Take the battery off. Have you tested that battery yet, or? What, this battery here? Yeah. This one I can't see. Well, well I've got a quick fix for you. Oh, yeah, you can just flip it up. Yeah, let's just take this out. <laughs> a quick fix. The problem with these Audi TTs is to get to anything as well, you've got to take off all this plastic trim, which looks beautiful, but is a bit of a nuisance. So this is the one I did all the hoses on, is it? Yes. So this has had all new PCV pipe system. It's had, oh, it's had a new coolant flange, hasn't it? It's had um, new turbo intercooler pipe. We just basically gave it a good going over, didn't we? By the way, if anyone wants to buy a top box, we've got one for sale here. It's a Mont Blanc, it's good, it's in good condition, used about four or five times. Uh, si what, 60 quid? Full disclosure. Full, oh, full disclosure, here we go. One of the rams is a bit gammy, look, don't hold up. Oh, well, that's, no, no, that's not gonna, it's, gonna affect it's anybody. The ram on this end's weak. If anyone wants a top box, 60 quid, good condition. Uh, two keys, all the fittings are with it. There you are. It's got no cracks, no bashes. Oh, I think that's a bargain, that is. Right, I've got something to tell you. And you need to, you need to be impressed with this. Uh, um, I'm always impressed, mate. Yesterday, on the channel, I got a little message from YouTube. Congratulations, one million views. Oh, right. One million views. How do you think about that? It's a big number of a million, is. Two blokes in a shed in Lincolnshire <laughs> farting about with knackered old cars. A million views. So if you have watched the channel, thank you very much. Uh, we are close to 5,000 subscribers Millions now. Million's a big number. It is. I think it's you and your Rover 70. the 70. amount of clothes your mum's got in her wardrobe. Well, there you go. Uh, we are close to 5,000 subscribers. If you could um, add to that number, that would be grand. I think we're about 100 off at the time of recording this. Um, it's free to do, it helps support the channel. Roll on two million. My dream, my ultimate goal, is to get Dad a YouTube play button and present Dad with one of those. Now that would be a momentous oh. day. <laughs> What's Dad one a, of them then? Well, a, a YouTube play button is a 100,000 subscribers. Oh, I think we've got a long way to go. We have got a long way to go, so maybe you can help get us to the 100,000. We're only 94,000 off, so it's doable. <laughs> right, let's get the battery out. So that battery is out. It's fixed in with this sort of weird battery clamp system. Handily, we've got another battery prepared. Here's one we made earlier. Ready to replace that one. Here's one we prepared earlier. Now that battery doesn't look too old, actually. A Platinum Prestige. It's a... Uh, what's that battery company I like? Tainia. Tainia, Tainia, that's it. Tainia battery. So the plan is to hang that one on and see if it goes away, right? Well, you can bet your life if you've got a voltage problem. It's not a good start, is it? I would suggest... I would not be surprised if this will make it a lot better. By just fitting a new battery? Yeah, because you've got no voltage, here. No, I had to jump it off with my jump pack this morning. See if that'll start it. Let me see if we'll start her up. Right, OK. See if that'll start So I've got the keys. Let's try and lock it and unlock it. Well, the central locking works, which is a, a fantastic sign. 
The auto drop window hasn't dropped. That's probably because the battery needs uh, resetting. Right, let's have a look. That's a good sign. The system test has done an okay system test. Let's make sure it's out of cogs. We don't run that over. Ready? Go on. So I've got a petrol light on, which I knew about. Uh, no ABS warning, which is good news. It's gone out. Should we go for a spin? Test drive? Yeah. Test drive. Are you going to do the test drive? Yeah. Oh, nice. Let me just move this out of the way then. Let me just put this somewhere safe. I've got, I've got my jump pack just in case. Good job I've got a battery, isn't it? So far, so good. Good job I've got a battery. I don't think... Oh, I don't think I've ever been a passenger in this. Right, I'm in. Hang on a minute. Let me get my seatbelt on. Right, TT test drive. Taking the customer for a road test. Have you ever driven this before? I've driven loads of Volkswagen Golfs. <laughs> You're a naughty. Nice. Petrol in it then? Yeah, let's go put some petrol in it, eh? No ABS light? No, and the ABS light had come on before now, if that makes sense. So it'd come on literally a couple of minutes, well, a couple of metres down the road. That was your problem, mate, battery voltage. Well, there you go. So why would low battery... It's upsetting the computer. It's as simple as that, eh? I hope so. No ABS light? No. Got a full light, which side's your petrol filler? This side, isn't uh, it? Yeah. Is it Audi that sticks to the speed limit? <laughs> I bet your indicators don't work. It rides nicely, do you think? Better than a smart car with the uh, faulty front suspension. <laughs> right, let's fill her up. Right, well, that's it. 70 quid later at our local co op filling station. 70 quid! <laughs> Are you in? I'm in, I'm in. Are you in? Right, I'm going to go for a ride in this blooming jumped up flipping Volkswagen Golf. Yes. So we filled the car up, 70 quid, full tank, happy days. Just need the seat adjusted to old man driving. <laughs> what is old man driving? Sitting upright, not yeah. laying down. See, I like to lay down in my Audi TT. This is an interesting role reversal. You driving and me a passenger. Well, at least the aircon works. Yes, that's not gone down, has it? No. I had the Hyundai i10 regas the other day. Did you? I did. How much did that cost? Well, I got it cheaper than what it says on the internet. Where did you go to? My local independent dealer. Johnson Motors? Yes. Go on then. 120? 100 quid plus the VAT. Well, that's all right. 120 quid, right? Yeah. That's fair enough, isn't it? Does it's, it work okay? Because it's that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 YF. Does it feel much better? Yeah, they've put some gas. Oh, they've put some dye in it for me. Lenny put some dye in it. Ah, so, just to make sure to see yeah, if it's so leaking. I'm, I've ordered myself a cheap UV torch off the eBay's. Yep. So if, if it does go in the arse, I'll know where it's coming from. Shall fair I? enough. Right, let's go for a little ride on the back roads I of Lincoln. I reckon the old uh, Hyundai i10, if it goes down again, I think I will get rid of it. Really? Get your mum another one. Get her a Kia Pride or whatever they're called. A Kia Pride? Well, we had... I had a Kia Pride. What is it, a Kia, a little Kia? Kia Picanto. Yeah, same thing, isn't it? Well, it's the same thing, yeah. But at least I know the one of the managers at the Kia garage, so if I need to know how I can get some help, can't I? Because <laughs> I don't know the manager at the Hyundai garage now, because he left. Joking apart, this doesn't drive too bad, does it? It's a wonderful little car. Sticks well. well I'm not driving as fast as you, but no, it's a...
Did I just get you to admit you, you like driving the TT? Not right, bad, does it? They always feel a bit tanky. How do you a mean? Bit, a, bit, a bit heavy. They, they, it is heavy. The steering wheel is heavy, but that's, well, that's that how feed, they are. Is that called feedback? Feedback. I, I call it wrenching at the steering wheel. Oh, we've got a good turn. I know we've got to turn round. Yes. We've got to turn round at the. Uh... We're very out. We're going to be very out of place in there, mate. Oh, listen to her roar! Right here we are at our local uh, vehicle pervert spot. I'm going to call it because we like to come and pry on all the cars. We're at our local Dobby's Garden Centre. It's quite early on a bank holiday Monday morning. There's not many cars here, mate, I'm afraid. No, You're no, going to be no. disappointed. Staff. So what we got? We've got a BMW, we've got a Citroen, we've got a rent. No, I'm, I'm, we need to come back. Come back later. It's a bit, uh, yeah. I, I feel it 500. Yeah. Look at the, look at with, the roof. Oh, with a checker plate roof. Oh, but look next to it, it's a useful vehicle. Volvo. Yeah, no, we need to come back. Yeah, there's no... Uh, Nothing beautiful in the car park. So you think it's driving okay now we've put a new battery on it? To be fair, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in fact, I'm quite enjoying it. Oh, well, take Wizzit up the road then. It's not a problem. Makes 70 pounds with the petrol in it. I've just had the uh, seat in a better position. I should be... Uh... Happy well, I've got a set of Recaro pole position sports seats we could fit in it. Yeah, they were sort of blank off the like, SRS or something. Yeah, is that the airbags? Yeah. But I've got the uh, I've got the fuses yeah, to do it. Line through here. Hmm. Whoa! <laughs> You're having too much fun, Mr. Coopland. <laughs> We're having a great time. <laughs> Whoa! Are you impressed with the power of the uh, Audi TT? It, it's to drive one of these. You've got to sort of predict it because it's not exactly sort of. I don't have to go quicker down there in a Vauxhall course than I could in this. Could you? Is that because you know the road and you know the course, though? Because I could, I could go up to 60 miles an hour on that road quite easily, quite quickly. Shall we take the car home and give it a once over now? Yeah. Cleared as long as that, haven't we? Yeah. Right, so we're back from our road test in the Audi TT. New battery seems to have solved the... Oh, Hyundai i10. Uh, seems to have solved the problem. Yeah. Fine, not a problem. How much is that battery, please? <laughs> it's my spare battery. You're not having that. Buy yourself a new tinker. Uh, right, let's get the car sorted. But no, joking apart, that's uh, solved the ABS. Anyway, we just need to check the brakes, check the lights and stuff, don't we? We filled the car up fully. You didn't fill it, did you? Well, no, I put some... <laughs> how... You chickened out at 70 quid, did you? How, how, is it not full? That's no, just over three quarters. <laughs> She's a thirsty old beast. Um, what do you reckon? There's not a lot to worry about, is there? No. Let's have a, let's have a, let's have a look. Was that your head? It was. That's why I don't like Audi TTs. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> now, I've spotted something else we need to address. Oh, right, mate. Which is this seat belt doesn't retract properly. Yeah, we could see to that. And actually, the driver's side as well, so that's something we need to do. The list of things to do. Uh, no. Sorry, what have you got there? 83.2. <laughs> yes, Dad is laser checking. 81.3. The temperature of the brakes. 52. That one's hot. Is it? Yeah, near what? side rear's warm. So what's that one at the back? What's that? What's the off side rear? Well, just tell me. No, just a minute. That's, 
No, they're not they're the same. I m misread John side. Aha! They're the same. Okay. something. How's it looking? There's nothing stinking hot anyway. Oh, good news. If you order yourself a battery up, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I'll order it from Tainia. It'll be here tomorrow, won't it? I don't think you changed it. I remember telling you when you was working that the battery's not up to much. Oh, no, I haven't put a new battery on this no, car. I was going to say, it won't up to much. No, fine. Fine, I fine, fine. I remember when we was doing it. Yeah. It's on a video, in fact. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I, I absolutely concur. In fact, one of the fault codes from the car, historic, was low voltage. And we put that down to the battery. Yeah. What's a new battery? 50, 60 quid, hopefully. <laughs> It is, isn't it? As long as you, you can get one cheaper, but it'll be a really, really, really cheap tap, won't it? The thing is, you want the one that's the right size, gives you the bestest blinking yeah. volt um, output, because they have loads of them, the, the different amp hours, mate. The issue I've got is, obviously, this car I don't drive exceptionally often, and it gets sort of sawned between October and, well... April, May time, when it comes out to play. Are you, is there any batteries that you'd suggest are best for laying over the winter? Or is it a case of just keeping a smart charger? You should charge look on? after them, shouldn't you? I know. Where do you plug this in? Uh, in the OBD reader. I know that. Where? <laughs> you normally zing me, so I've zinged you. It's uh, under, the, under there where you are right now, yeah. That was no codes, was it? Excellent. Do you want to put the actual proper Audi yeah. VW one on? Certainly do. It's in the back seat. Back seat. Oh. I brought it with me, mate. Oh, we could have took your mum. <laughs> we could have put your mum in there. <laughs> she'd Did to, you actually realise there was a back seat? She'd have, to, she'd, have, she'd have to sit with her feet sideways, wouldn't she? Just let me show some people, if they've never seen the rear of an Audi TT Coupe. Uh. Yeah. That's something we need to do as well. We need to fabricate something to fix them flaps down. Ooh. Flap sticking. That needs doing as well. Now I've got the seat forward a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't get in the back, mate. You couldn't even get a child in the back there. I don't, I don't know how they can sell this car. Well, you could if you got your seat right forward, I suppose, couldn't you? Yeah. So if mum's driving and she's five foot, you could probably get a small child in the back. Let's face it. How do I put this? They're not a family car, are they? I suppose a lot of people who drive these are small, petite people. Like me? Yes, and me. So you've hooked up the VW Audi scanner which is probably exactly the same tool with a different name on it. Yeah, but this chucks up funny numbers, doesn't Two it? Two codes? Yeah. Let's have a look at what they are. Right, so I've looked at them codes. The first one is the boost control pressure valve issue. Um, we didn't actually replace the boost control pressure valve. Yeah, let's erase them. And the second one, 10010, is low voltage, which we knew about. Let's erase those. And See, that didn't show up, did it? No. So actually... That's a nice little field test of the VW Audi scanner versus the OBD2 scanner. No codes after starting it up. Well, it didn't seem to be a lot wrong with it, did there? That, it it doesn't little... drive faulty, in my opinion. Well, there you go. Let's pre-MOT it, eh? Back to basics, eh? Yes. Where are you going to start? <laughs> <laughs> Not by pouring a can of petrol on it and setting it on fire. No, I'm going to, I'm going to take it and flash it around the back lanes of Lincolnshire. Can do. You've got to clean it afterwards. Can you imagine it? Dad took my car and thrashed it and broke it. <laughs> Dad ran out of talent whilst driving my <laughs> Audi TD. It's now in a dike in Lincolnshire. <laughs> do you know what I want to do first? What's that? I want to blow the tyres up. If you have an Audi TT, your tyre pressures are written in the fuel filler cap, as long as your sticker hasn't gone walkabouts. Thankfully, the sticker is on this one, and it tells us at the back here, there's two different sticker colours, by the way. Purple, not colour code with the car, 
but purple, which means that it's a coupe, and then another one, which I can't remember, I think it's a whitey yellow, which means it's a roadster. 3630. 3630. What have you found in the boot? You've said, oh, look. What have you found? Aha. Spanners to Nick. The, I beg your pardon. <laughs> That's the spare wheel and the uh, space saver. Yeah, that, that's a pain to get out, that is. But it just folds back. I must admit, I don't think I've actually looked at the space saver slash toolkit in this. It looks relatively full, doesn't it? Oh, nice. It, yeah, that's, I don't know what that is. They do come with the car. Well, it's not for selling the stuff then. That's never been used, has it, eh? You can inflate that to the recommended pressures. Well, yes, that is part of the, uh, the MOT. Is that a no? What's that? Put some of them shiny alloy caps on the valves. Yes, let's that do that. TT on them. I look forward to you cutting them off in three weeks. It, did, it drove quite well, you know. I was surprised how well that drove. I'm surprised you've said that. I was surprised how well it drove. Did I have cracked my head? Oh, yeah, you have. <laughs> I can feel it. Pete Coupland's review of the Audi TT coming to magazines near you soon. It didn't drive as bad as I thought it would. <laughs> so it was a little bit low at the back. Tires are good. So where am I sitting? Well, that bit. Yeah, can you see? Jesus. I don't think. They might as well not put a back seat in and just. That's what the discussion was. Are you getting in? Boot room? No, I'm not. No. Look at how I did getting in and out of it. You mm. see the top of my head, I scuffed it. Oh, your head, I was looking at your knees. No. Your knees. Oh, yeah. yeah, you are, you took the skin off. I know, I did it on the door frame. So you don't want an Audi TT, Mother? No. You're going to stick with your Hyundai i10? I'll have a Hyundai or a Corsa, any day. While I'm here, I'm going to make sure I blow the spare wheel up. Um, and according to the chart, 60 PSI. And well, it's a good job I've checked that because actually it was 10 PSI. You've got the locking wheel nut tool, right? Yeah, I have. I want to show you something. I've heard of not tightening these up too much so that they don't get them off. I put the sock... Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, right. So what have you just discovered? That was... I, just, I haven't had a bar on that. And is that the locking wheel nut? Yeah. They always say don't tighten them too tight. Oh. Right. I don't think we've had these brakes down because you bought this car and all we did was did the engine. Do you know what? I think you're right. I don't think we've ever had the wheels off. Is that one the same? Yeah. Is it? Interesting. Now, when I bought the car <laughs> from... Oh, so, nah. From somebody who should have been a uh, respectable, trustworthy person who then went to go on and steal out of the car parts, um, they told me that it had new brake pads. Obviously, I took that on face value, being a trustworthy, professional member of our community. Um, maybe that person couldn't be bothered to get the locking wheel nut tool out the car. Well, they're tight. Yeah. So why aren't the locking wheel nuts tight? Well, so they don't have problems. Yeah, probably. Mm. Okay. I can see the point, but that's a little bit excessive. Yes. Let's do this properly. I've never come across that before. Are they all the same? Oh yeah, this one was the same. I'll get all these cracked off and we'll check the lights. And there's a seat belt you know about, isn't there? Well, there's two. And a washer sprayer. And the lights need cleaning. Side lights. Side lights. We've got huh. two. Yep. Good news. Dip and main. Dip? Yeah. Yeah. Main beam. I indicate left. Indicate right. Yeah, just put the hazards on as a matter of academic. Yep. Is the warning light working? Yep. Any front fogs on here? No. No, brilliant. Right, let's pip the to quick, will you? Okay, and this washer's blocked, is it? It is, yeah, ready? Oh, yeah. 
we'll deal with that in a minute. That's a fail. It is a fail. Should we test the lights at the back? This mate, we'll show them. Let's look at these blades. Put the side lights on, mate. Side lights? Yeah, so the number plate lights work. Yes? Yes. Good. Hang on a minute. Yeah, go on then. Left? Yeah. Right? Yes, mate. I'll just do that again. Has oh, it? No. Yeah, that's all right. Yep. Brake lights and fog lights. Fog? That's a fog light. Just check the reverse. While we're here. Reverse, stand yep. by. Oh, that works, mate. Brakes. Yeah, that'll do. Good, lights yeah. are okay. Right, so we've got so, the washers to fix. Let's do them washers now. So the washers aren't working on the driver's side. Oh. The jet is probably gonna just oh. be blocked. Right, you've got that out. How did you get that out? I broggled the front edge. Let's have a look. Ah. Ah, uh -huh. the hose pipe. Bum. Is it heated? Yes, it's got some wires to it anyway. Oh, wow. Oh, great. Great. Absolutely great. So what are you doing now? Taking off that well, plenum cover? to see if I can find the wire pipe. Just try and wash this, will you, mate? See if there's anything coming out of there. Yep. Ready? Go on. Radio. Okie cokey. So there's water coming out of there, is there? Yes, mate. Yeah. So it's just the nozzle that's blocked? Yes, mate. Good. That's good news. Your plan is to just blow it through with the airline, is it? It is. Can you do any major damage to these by doing that? Can if you just stick stick the nozzle on the thing and blow it back as you blow, finish up blowing all your pipes off, that's worth if you're not careful. Right, I understand. Mm. It sounds like it's coming through there. Are oh, you ready? Yes. Aha! Better it. That works. Oh, okay. Good stuff. Well, that's fixed that. That was relatively easy, wasn't it? It just needed unblocking. What do they get blocked? Just scale and stuff gets in there. It's, that's right. Yeah, yep. lime scale. Right, so I need to fill the washer bottle up because it's telling me it's empty, and then we will carry on. One thing we pointed out earlier in the video is that the seat belts are a bit sluggish to retract. Um, including the drivers and the passengers. Well, this is particularly bad, isn't it? The passenger's very bad. Is that an MOT advisory? Or is it an MOT fail? That's a fail. Is it? This one is, yeah. Yeah. So the driver's one, retracting nicely now. Uh, you've done something to it. Let's just have a look what you're going to do. It's just not... So just show us that passenger seat belt. So you pull it all the way out and it sort of isn't retracting properly. So you can hear sort of the... The ratchet inside squeaking. Oh, right. Very noisy and not so, retracting. What what is causing that? It's usually this. Getting better. It is getting better. What is it you're spraying in there? So it's 104, is it? What is that stuff? Car interior care. That's what you use it for. Oh, right, okay. It's and it sprays on the mechanism and sort of lubricates it up, does it? Might have to strip this one out. Yeah, it's yeah. not retracting, is it still? Mm, so you've not... done it on the driver's side and it's fixed it, basically. Well, the driver's side wasn't bad, was it? No, but obviously the passenger side doesn't get as, as much use. It look right, does it? Can you see? It doesn't look right. You mean it looks twisted? Yeah. There's another thing about banging your passenger's head here. <laughs> and I think the, st the seat belts are twisted. Yeah. If I'm honest. Something, something funny going on. Oh, this one's all right. That one's right. Is it the webbing that's twisted or the buckle? 
I'm not sure. The buckle's twisted, isn't it? It is, son, yeah. It's just that it's a two-man job to, to turn it. I wonder if thought that buckle would get through there, wrong. I think it's wrong in the chassis. No, no, it's just... Your bugger, that's tight. That goes like that, that yep. goes like that. So that was right. It was right, wasn't it? Still doesn't look right, does it? No. <laughs> Aha! We have solved the problem. Uh, it didn't fill me, sadly, because it needed both hands and I hadn't got the tripod here and the camera needed charging up. Just tell us... Hang on a minute, that doesn't look right. No, no I'm just trying to put this bolt in. It was twisted inside this panel uh, now, Just mate. tell us what we've done. So in here, in, in there, was all twisted. So the roller going that way, yeah. but halfway up here there was a twist in it, so it was coming out of there wrong. So we pulled it all the way out and just untwisted it. So what did you have to do? So I obviously helped. We've got it unhooked at the bottom there. We've pulled it, I pulled it sort of to the blooming driver's seat here. How has that happened? It's just gone back sometime wrong, hasn't it? And it's sort of twisted itself and then I'm guessing someone's yanked it. Yeah. And, that, got uh, and is that why it wasn't retracting properly as well? Yes, mate, yeah. Excellent. It's got a twist in it, so it's not so easy, was it? Oh, look at that. Just show us again. Nice. So, 10 minutes. Thankfully, we didn't have to remove any of that trim because that would have been a nuisance. It looks like it's back seat out job. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's a bench seat out job. So that's fixed that. That is a problem with the car that I've had since I bought it. 10 minutes. A little bit of fettling, a little bit of working stuff out. This is why you are a genius. It's just mechanicking, mate. Legend. Thumbs up for the legend, please. It's just mechanicking. 40 quid that job, mate, at the dealership. Oh, really? I think it's a lot more than that at a dealership, you know, mate. How much do you think Audi would have charged us to do that? I tell you what Audi would have told me. It needs a new seat belt. That's yeah. what Audi no, would have told wouldn't. me. Mm. They'd have said, ah, oh, it's all right, Mr. Copeland, it's twisted. We'll yeah. soon sort that out for you. We've got a man who went to a course untwisting seatbelt. Mm. No, joking apart, that's... Uh, that's made that much better, hasn't it? It has. Good it, stuff, thanks for that. It's made it absolutely bob on, hasn't it? What's next? So put that little thing there. It holds that up in the useful position. Is that what that's for, is it? Top man. That'll do nicely, Gromit, won't it? Should we check the rear seat belts over here? Better. So that rear has been done. It makes them slippy without being greasy. Two nap, 104 interior care. Get some today. I'm impressed we've got that sorted so quick, to be honest with you. I thought that was going to be a pain. Oh. So th well, no, I did. I thought it was going to be a take the seat belts out job and grease all the interior of the seat belt stuff. That could have been an horrid job, that could. Tea up. Good idea. This is a rare occurrence, tea break in the sun. Yeah, we can rest on the laurels since we've got the seat belt done. <laughs> that was a job. That could have been a pain in the bum. That could have been a horrible job, yeah. Good. Yeah, thank goodness. So, so far, tyres done, battery replaced. No. <laughs> I've loaned you a battery. You've lent me a battery. Which you're going to buy a new one and give me my loan battery back. Mm, yeah. You are. Okay. Um, so tyres done, battery replaced, washer, washer's done, yep. seat belts done. Yep. Actually, these are little jobs we should have done when I bought the car. I was too busy making it run. Yeah. What do you reckon to the car then, now you've driven it? It's all right. It drives nice, actually. The brakes are fine. Performance is okay. I've just worked it out though. I think what it is, it's one of them sort of cars that goes where you tell it to. Mm. Well, I'm probably more used to a car that I encourage it to go the right way, if you know what I mean. I understand. You point it in that direction and it goes, rather than thinking, I'm going to give it a bit more because it's going to go straight on. Yeah. Obviously, it's a four wheel drive. Yeah, you've so not got any a... understeer. No. And I like a bit of understeer. It has got ditch finder tyres in. What is that? Are oh, the cheap ones, are they? It's got rapids on. But considering I replaced the tyres on my Roadster and it was 
nearly 300 pounds worth of tyres. Because mm. they're low profile, aren't they? They were Continentals. Yeah, what's 300 quid a tyre? No, not a tyre. It was 300 quid. Oh. But that was seven or eight tires years ago. Tyres have gone up a lot, mate. That's inflation for you. Tires, keep your tyres inflated. <laughs> but it, it does, I, I must admit, I think I prefer a little bit of understeer. Hmm. And you ain't got it with that. But not, well, I want driving it fast. But No, no. But you was impressed with the drive. You was impressed with it. It rode all right, didn't it? Heavy. It's a heavy car. It is. Heavy car to steer. But a lot of that is, it is, it goes where you point it. I think probably I'm more used to cars that go somewhere in the approximate direction you point them, <laughs> and you can make fine adjustments. You can't make fine adjustments with that, it goes where you point it. It's, it's basically saying to you, you told me to go this way, mate, and if it's wrong, it's not my fault. The thing is, you're used to now driving things like your Peugeot 406, a Hyundai i10, Nissan Note. When did you last drive a performance sports car. Last time I drove one of your Audi TTs, I should think. Well, that was today, then. No, I brought that blooming ragtop thing back from... You did. You, so that was show. a long time ago now. Must have been 2016. Yeah. Well, re that reminded me that I don't like soft 15. tops. 15. Now, here we go. So, for those of you who don't know, I own a Roadster TT as well. Four years newer than that one, so it's a 2004 plate. It's also purple, it's a different shade of purple. And it's got less miles on the clock. It is sleeping, it's been sleeping for about four years now, which is a travesty, it needs to get back on the road. But I prefer that, the coupe. Yeah. It's less rattly. You ain't got that. Uh, it's less knocky, it's less bangy. Yeah. You ain't got that. I'm flexing in the middle feel. Yeah. I prefer the coupe. Yeah, you ain't got that f f anything with a rag top. It tends to always feel a little bit, I'm twisting in the middle somewhere. Mm. I didn't drive it fast, but uh, I wouldn't want to drive it fast. Tea break over then, and we've now uh, just checked under here. We have filled up the coolant bottle. How low was the coolant? Well, I put 100 millilitres in. So 100 million. We've checked the brake fluid level. That's all okay. Oil level, you've checked that. All good? Yeah, everything's perfect, mate. You may see there's some uh, puddles on the floor here. These uh, have what I call them aliens, which are the headlight washers. They pop out of these flaps in here, and you can see the alien in there. Um, there's actually a problem with them, in that they're missing a couple of uh, nozzles. It appears that probably what's happened is they've got blocked and the pressure behind them has forced them out. I'm gonna try and buy some more nozzles. That's a job we need to do. And also a job that Dad is trying to address is these, uh, these doors. Effectively, when you open the door on an Audi TT, it should drop the window a little bit. We've got an intermittent fault in that sometimes it recognizes with the micro switch that the door has been opened and drops the window and turns the interior light on, and sometimes, well, <laughs> it doesn't. We're using WD-40 Super Contact Cleaner because it was all gunked up in there, wasn't it? How's it looking now? Less gunked up. Mm, there is a micro switch in there that we can hear clicking on and off. Um, it has been something, an issue I've had with the car since, we've, since I've bought it, but it hasn't caused me any issues. But the, what, the way we've noticed it really is, well, when you open the door, it doesn't tell you that the door is open when the, uh, when the engine's running, which it does obviously with the boot and fuel filler cap, etc. Oh, et cetera. The switch is under there somewhere. So there's a, as Dad has <laughs> just worked out, there's a micro switch under there. Hopefully it's not broken. So the micro switch is under there, you might be able to hear it clicking on and off. It's somewhere in there, isn't it? It's in there. It's full of crud and it'll clean it up. Oh, to strip it all down to get to these latches. So we've reprogrammed the windows. And is it stopping short? Yep. It is. Let's just shut the shut the door. It's dropped now. Aha! Now it's telling me that the door is open. Good. So let's turn that off. Shut the door. Up goes the window. It's all sticky that is in there, isn't it? Let's put some different sort of lubrication on it now. So it's open, it's, it's temperamental now. It's getting better. Now to do the other side then. 
which again probably needs a reprogram. Let's just have a look in there at all this crud, all this gunk. Yeah. So anyone that is an Audi TT expert will probably tell us that this is a common fault, do you reckon? I should think so, son. If I remember rightly, the uh, Roadster has an intermittent fault with the passenger window in that sometimes it goes down, sometimes it doesn't. It needs a good hard slam of the door to release it. How's that looking? There's all lots of crud in there, dude. What is that crud? Is it just grease and yeah, oil and dirt? It is, mate. That's just what it is. So we've managed to get the door window to drop. That micro switch at the, at the beginning wasn't working, but with a little bit of uh, effort, it's now working. Right now to jack the car up and take a look at the brakes. I hope we're not going to find anything horrible. No, I hope not. What would you define as horrible? Broken spring. <laughs> you read me mind. Very warm up. Inspector. Too warm for the inspector. She's inside in the shade. What about the inspector's mummy? Oh, mm. she's inside probably watching telly. So the tyres are all good. They're good on there. Let's have a look at the brakes and the discs. Oh, looks all right. Spring. Yeah, good. The big wheels. Tyres good, wheels good. The big wheels. B5s and them have that multi-link suspension with them springs wedged in. Oh, I don't know. You know more than me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I do, don't I? It's, it's, it's quite a simple suspension system is, yeah, in comparison. To... Yes, the A4 B5s have got that. So you've got a pry bar. What are you looking for? You're checking that bush, mate. There's no, no knocks and bangs when we're driving, thankfully. It's all been recently done, hasn't it? Yes, it's not binding, is it, that it's all one? all good. I'm not going to take that to bits for no reason. Just check that boot on that ball joint. Yeah. Da, da, da. Da, da. Looks like the ball joint's been changed. Ah, we found a problem. That rack boot at the back is split. That's a shame. Dad's starting a list. The fact that we've been working on this for a couple of hours and we found that, though. Well, we haven't been working on it. We've been peddling about with door locks and stuff, haven't we? <laughs> haven't been doing proper work, have we? But right, that's, that needs doing. That needs doing. So at the moment, that's a fail, right? Yes. What's the, uh, what's the official term? Rack boot deteriorated as to prevent, not preventing ingress of dirt and moisture. Now Something you know. Like that. Fail. That's testing the top mountings. Let's see what the other side feels like when we do it. These Mark 1 TTs have a habit of eating top mountings. Did they? Uh, good to know. Thankfully all good. Now to check out the near side. Your jack has developed a, a squeak. Overuse. That is a big old rim. Big old tyre. It is, mate. Oh dear, what's that going on there? What is that? Well, it's the back of the pad backing dust. has come adrift and it's touching the wheel, I should think. Oh, right. When I bought the car, I think I said to you, the hub, the rear hubs sound like they need looking at. Maybe it was that. <laughs> oh. It's been carving the wheel up, look. Let's have a look at that. Oh, blooming heck. That's, that's shocking, isn't it? That's, that's a big problem. 
I think there's enough meat for it to not be a problem. <laughs> yeah, but can you feel how deep that is? It's been cutting its wheel off. Yeah. Wow. What's caused that? Oh dear. That is a big problem. So, <laughs> the comedy continues in that, again, the chap I bought this car from told me he'd fitted new brake pads. He didn't tell me he'd fitted them wrong. I'm guessing them being fit wrong has caused that to slide. So and I don't know. I don't, um, I shall I tell you that now? I don't know. You're being too kind prematurely. So just, just explain to us what's happened here. Well, it's the anti-squeal shim on the back of the pad is not located. Look. And that, that has been done at fitting. It can't have... I don't know until I'm going to look. ...squeezed itself out. I'm not going to worry. It's just a bit of mechanic in. It's, it's apprentice level mechanic in. <laughs> this is the sort of thing they give you to do when you're an apprentice. Oh dear. Let me just have a little zoom in on that. Oh dear. Oh dear. I don't know how that's happened. Uh, what's that? Sticky stuff. Can't believe that that little piece of tin has caused such damage to that wheel. Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? See that little bit of paper? Yeah. You take that off when you're fitting the pads. <laughs> We're going to have to have a look at the other side, aren't we? We are. So that piece of metal is a shim, right? Just to stop it squeaking, mate. Yeah, it's anti ra anti squeal shim. It seems that it's been bent. I don't know Do you how think it's someone? I cannot grasp how it's happened, actually. I think the person that has fitted these brakes didn't know what they were doing. Could have been me fitting these brakes. See that can't. It's got them tags to stop. You can't it get it off. wrong, can you? I'm going to glue it on again. So we've stuck that backing back on there. We've cleaned up the CAD pad carrier with the uh, wire brush, copper slip where it needs to be, and putting it back together. That that back bit. Let me just show you what was what was just left. Give me a on. wire brush, mate, will you please? Hi. This back bit was left on. You meant to take these off, right? That little bit, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that was left on there. Somewhere. I worryingly. Don't know. Um, I don't know what that. Okay, is. you need a wire brush. It's not, uh, I know for sure it's not hanging off because I didn't see it, but... Uh, no. What would be more, more worrying to me is if the other side didn't have that thing on and this side did, it would probably show me that the person who did it wasn't really paying much attention or didn't know what they were doing. Got distracted by the production team, perhaps. <laughs> ah, you see? I can't comment. See, so he pushed it off, pushing that on. Yes. That's what happened. And probably the fact that that was on there has made it thicker as well, hasn't it? Any fish. We're not so worrying. that's probably going to solve, hopefully, the... Funny little scratting noise. Funny right, little yeah. binding noise. Right, we're back from another tea break and it's time to jack the rear up. We have checked this side as well, just to make sure that the uh, paper sticky thing has not been left on on that side. And worryingly, it has not. So clearly someone got distracted when they were doing this job. I think the bloke was doing that side and his dog was doing this side. Yeah. And his dog no. ain't quite got the angle on it. No. Brake pad inspector. <laughs> right, let's take a look then at the rear. See what's going on. It is a beautiful day, by the way, in Lincolnshire, this bank holiday Monday. Let me know in the comments below what you're getting up to. What have you been up to? Have you been to some shows? Did you get to Shedfest? 
did you go to uh, anywhere else? <laughs> I'm trying to think of things that were on Mobile. this weekend. Well, it's funny you should say that. Somebody in the comments last week has said they're off to Mabel. So um, if you have been to Mablethorpe, shout out to you. Quality, right quality. What are you looking for on the rears here? Oh, a wheel. Oh, yep, found a wheel. We found a wheel, that's good. Tyres looking good, wheels looking good. And the good news is there's no deep gouges or scores in the back of that one. These tyres are very good actually, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yes. Thank goodness. The bonus. Tyres are probably worth more than the car. Yeah, well, let's have a look in there. So far, I can't see anything majorly wrong, but that's always famous last words. Jolly well is, Gromit. What can you see? I can see this. Oh dear. That doesn't sound good. See that there? That is the thing for the self-leveling lights. Oh right. And it must pop off now and again because it's held on with the it's cable tie. It's held on tie. with the cable tie. Okay. It's a usual thing actually. Apart from that, I'm putting this Should we chop the end of that cable tie off so it looks a bit neater? No, we'll leave it alone. Oh, there you go. It's been all right as it is. If I start tinkering with stuff... It might go wrong. Yeah. Well, it's not rusty and rotten under there, is it? It has been protected. It has. It's got some wax oil on it's it. It's got wax oil on there, so that's looking good. It has me almighty load. So you're not, not concerned with this, uh, this corner? And the rear wheel is going back on. Nothing serious down there, good news. And last but not least, offside rear. Again, touch wood, we don't find anything uh, too devastating. So far, the only thing that we need to address, touch wood, is that steering rack gator. I'm okay with that. Should that shock absorber be see-through? Uh, it's got some corrosion, hasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, the outer shield's rotted away, hasn't it? It's not a fail, but it's not very good, is it? It's letting muck get in, you see? Yeah. She is weeping a little bit. Something to address, but not an MOT fail. I wouldn't have thought so, no. Uh, New springs on the back by looks of things. So talk to me about that, that shock absorber. Well, the, she the shroud's rotted away. Right, so it's not the actual shock absorber that's rotten. No, it's just no, the fine. shroud. The shaft's in there. Yep. But it is making it weep because it's getting dirt in it. Yep. So what would you recommend replacing that? That's new shockies, doesn't it? And you'd replace them in a, as a pair? Yes, mate. Yep. Big job? I don't know. So the thing is that it's not like the Smart 450 recently. The spring is sort of separate, isn't it? So it looks to me like you uh, you unbolt take it. the wheel arch liner out and take it out there. Yeah. Whip it off the bottom and uh, get them on. Yeah. I'll get a pair of them ordered then, eh? But apart from that, no major issues. Um, that side either. Good. On it goes. How are you thinking then? What do you reckon? If you put a steering rack boot on it, son, it's uh, ready for MOT. Excellent. Well, there you have it then. It's taken us actually the best part of three or four hours on and off, fettling with the Audi TT. Things we've done, we've replaced the battery. It's not, as Dad keeps reminding me, the new battery. I need to buy a new one. It's a loan battery. A What's a new battery going to cost? Well, 60 quid, potentially. It's going to come next day if I order it this afternoon from uh, Tanier. We've checked the coolant. We've checked the brake fluid. We've checked the oil. We've checked all the lights. We've checked the seat belts. The seat belts needed some work, and that could have been a difficult job had we not had the expert on the case. Um, other things we've done, obviously we've filled it with petrol and taken it for a test drive. That brake on this near side was quite worrying and I'm glad that Dad spotted that. Thankfully, not a major issue on the off side. There's no brakes binding anywhere. That ABS fault that it threw up this morning, I genuinely think was due to the fact that there may have been a little bit of vine this morning and that electric system was low on voltage. What do you reckon? Told you what it was. Yeah. Low voltage has thrown up an issue. Apart from that steering rack gator, which we're going to replace on the off side, which is going to cost about 10 quid, I can't see any other major issues from OT, can you? No. Good stuff. 
I'm going to keep the car. It is a car I am going to keep for now, and I'm going to take it to work in the next couple of days just to see how we're getting on. I will also be replacing the rear shock absorbers just purely because of the little bit of rot there. I don't know why I didn't tighten these up. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments below. MOT pass, any advisories? Hopefully not, can't see any oil leaks. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. Hopefully MOT is gonna be a roaring success. There will be a video of me taking it for an MOT on the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It does help what we're doing. Dad's just talking the wheel nuts up and then it's job done. We'll take it for a test drive. Till next time, whatever you're getting up to, thanks for watching, have a great day, goodbye. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.